dear, 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 dear. Hmm, hmm. What perfectly marvellous weather we're having. Lovely. You know, I think you'd better let me see you home under my umbrella, or you'll get wet through. Well, of course, if you insist, Mr. Hurst. Look, can't you call me George? I insist on calling you Catherine. marvellous weather we're having. Lovely. You know, darling, I'm in luck. With my new job and everything happening at once. And... What are you thinking about? What a silly question. This is the most important hour in my life. Me too. Darling, just think of it. A home where we can always be together. Well, life will really be worthwhile. I know. Your head is full of ideas and plans of, of furniture and colour schemes and whatnot. And, well, when's it to be? Oh, in about a couple of months. A couple of months? Why, damn it, that's a lifetime. Here, what's the date? Where's the paper? Now, uh, what's the third? Now, one month from today. September the third. You think you can remember that? Good. It's only blast, is it? I thought we were for it that time. You know, Lester, I, I can't make you out. You're so calm, so sure of yourself. Don't you ever get rattled? No, sir. I wish I had your nerve. I haven't any more nerve than the next man. Only I know that if I were to kick off, well... Well, what? Oh, nothing. Only that when a man's been happily married for a dozen years or so as I have, he's had as good a share of life as any man's work. Then if he's got to die after that, well, he's got no regrets and nothing to reproach himself with. I've got a girl too. If we're going to get married, just as war broke out. You know, sometimes I, I lie awake at night, wondering if I'm ever going to see her again. That letters from her. She's looking after evacuated kids or something. I know what that means. Getting married on your first leave, eh? Yes. That's what I've been waiting for. You know, a man only begins to appreciate a girl when he comes face to face with all this. I sometimes wonder if ever I'll see... I miss Kay so much, I... I think I'm going crazy. Take it easy, son. Come on, lads. It's nearly nine o'clock.
darling. It's uh, good to see you again. Let me look at you. Okay, you look marvelous. Darling, how's your foot? Oh, it's fine. Do you miss me? It possibly hurts. Look, I, I've got something for you. These parcels? Yes, you know, you never guess what they are. They're, um, they're, they're, well, they're part of your trousseau and they come straight from Paris. But I, I know you love them. Oh, you do? How? Well, I'll explain that later. Darling, we're going to get married right away. I've only got a few weeks to leave and I want to crowd a whole lifetime with you into them. We'll, we'll get a license straight away and, and then you can tell me your news later. Darling, what's the matter? Why are you wearing black? Darling, what is it? You look so unhappy. Come on, let, let's go have some coffee, shall we? Hmm? Okay, something's happened. Tell me what it is. I didn't want to tell you right away, darling. Edward was killed in a motor accident. I've just come from his funeral. Your brother? Oh, my dear, I'm so sorry. And you were so fond of him too, weren't you? You poor little thing. But it, it all seems so incredible. Edward was such a good driver and so careful. How did it happen? I don't know. He wasn't himself that night. I had a feeling he was upset about something. I tried to stop him going out. Oh, Ted, why must you? Open the door. I'm sorry, Kurt. Well, your hands are shaking. You're having fun all evening. What is it? Why can't you leave me alone? Edward! Edward! Be careful in the black house! Blackout, eh? That's not like Edward at all. Oh, my dear, I'm, I'm so sorry. Will you take me home now? Yes, but what about the license? Darling, forgive me. Not now. Not just yet, at any rate. You mean you, you want to postpone the wedding? Well, naturally, darling, I can't... But I've only I've... got a few weeks' leave. Oh, I'm sorry, George. Do try to understand. Darling, listen. I haven't seen you for months. You've no idea how much I've missed you out there. Oh, for God's sake, let's get married right away. I can't stand being parted from you any longer. You've no idea how terribly I need you. George, don't you understand? I can't. I simply can't feel like that just now. Give me a little time. I'll be all right. But not now. A little time? God, how long do you think I've got? I shall be back at the front in a few weeks. You talk as though you were living in some sort of dream world. Edward's been killed. All right, I'm very sorry. But what about us? Life must go on. We've got to snatch every bit of happiness while we can. So love. Haven't you any feelings? It isn't that I don't care. You know this. Feelings? It seems to me that you're the one without any feelings. George. I mean it. I think it's very selfish of you. Utterly selfish. George, how dare you? Well, then why don't we get married right away? That is, if you really do love me. You know I do. Well, here's your chance to prove it. Say yes. Don't try to force this on me. Please respect my feelings, even if you don't understand them. I can't pretend to understand them. Not if you still love me. I suppose you're like all the rest. You've just been fooling. How dare you speak to me like that? What are you trying to do, point a pistol at my head? Now or never? I'm very sorry, but that's precisely how I feel. Thank you, Bye.
it. And then, of course, there was Ronnie Goodchild. My dear, he positively gives me palpitations. And he drives divinely. He never has any trouble about petrol either. He knows a place where he can get any amount he likes. And dirt cheap, too. Do you like him better than Fred? I don't know. When I'm with him, I think so. And then when I'm with Fred, I simply can't decide. Oh, I see. You've got one of those loving natures. I suppose I have. You know, you ought to take a tip from me, Marcel. I can't make you out. You've got the face and the figure, but you don't know how to use them. You think not? Sure. See life like me. Think of the fun you're missing. Oh, I don't know. I think I get fun in my modest way. Rot. All this old-fashioned stuff. Petting and kissing. That's as dead as your Aunt Sally. I mean, the real thing. The real thing? I think when I find the right fellow, it'll mean the real thing. I can't see what fun there is in throw with every other man you meet. You don't appreciate the right one when he comes along. I think you're just old-fashioned. Oh, Harry, it's not more outstanding than this, does it, dear? Yes, sir. What will you have? Bronx, Manhattan, my lady. Give me a double whiskey, will you? Yes. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm so terrible, sir. Oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, do let me No, know. no, no, please. It's a pleasure. I don't... Oh. In Paris, I guess. Yes. Lucky girl. Who is she? Oh, just uh, just someone I used to know, that's all. Oh. I hear a sad note in your voice. A broken romance. Do tell me. I love to hear about other people's troubles. Oh. Fragrant minute. Well, good night, my dear. I see you're busy. The cat. You've got a really charming flat here. If you knew how I appreciate all this comfort after a dugout. You, uh, you won't catch cold or anything, will you? Come on, soldier. Shy. How sweet. Yes. Hurry up, we're late as it is. Don't you dress yet? For heaven's sake, hurry up. Madison will be very hurt if we're late again. Do you see my stocking? 
No, I haven't. Well, here's one of them. Now, where on earth is the other? Oh, my letter! Do pick them up, George! Oh, for heaven's sake! Why can't you keep the place in order? Oh, shut up, can't you? It's my place, isn't it? Well, never mind about the letters. Hurry up and get dressed. Anne Matheson's a stickler for punctuality. Oh, blast you and your precious friends. I don't really want to go anyway. They bore me to tears. She and a silly husband. Well, there's no need to insult, my friend. Look here. Why can't we go to a variety show and see something better? You know I've nothing in common with that dull crowd. Besides, they don't really like me. They only ask me out of politeness. That Anne Matheson with all her sporting kids. Disagreeable little brat. They're my friends, Lorraine, and I want you to be friends with them too. Besides, it won't do you any harm to take a few tips on how to run a flat from Anne. I don't know what's come over you. You were all right the first couple of weeks. Then you started finding fault with me right and left. You've got to take me the way you find me. And if you don't like me that way, you can lump it. Answer it, will you? Uh, good morning, yes. sir. I'm from Electricity Company. Have you been having any trouble with your lights lately? No. I'm sorry, but you're going to get some now. I've come to cut off your supply, sir. What? Uh, you know, so now... Uh... Oh, yes. J just a minute, will you? Lorraine, why haven't you paid the electric light bill? Someone's come to cut you off. Lorraine, I gave her the money to settle the account. Why didn't you pay it? I forgot. You'll find some money in my bag. You forgot. You probably spent the money, you mean. Where is your bag? One, four, six. I'm sorry, sir. I'm not allowed to take money. You I've come to cut off the supply. I can't morning. take money, sir. I've come to cut off the supply. Edward Anderson. Lorraine, what do you know about Edward Anderson? He was a friend of mine. I haven't seen him for weeks. Give me that letter. I suppose you let him up the garden path, like you did all the others before him. That's my affair. And how dare you talk to me like that? Oh, Lorraine, how could you? He was only a kid. So now I'm a horrible siren. A seducer of schoolboys, am I? You didn't seem to think so the first few days. Give me that letter. Just a minute. You seem very anxious to have this letter back. What was there between you two? You see, I happen to know what became of Edward Anderson. What was there between you two? Dr. Macmillan, what I feared is true. What does he mean by that? What does he reproach you for? Shut up. It wasn't my fault. It was his own. He forced himself on me. Besides, he'll be all right. Dr. Macmillan will fix him. You killed him. You're really responsible. He smashed himself up. What did he mean by that letter? What did he have to see Dr. Macmillan about? George! You're hurting me. Leave me alone. I didn't mean anything. I didn't mean to hurt him. It wasn't my fault. It was the fault of you men. Beasts. All of you. Kenny. Now that was it. What a godforsaken fool I've been. I've been treated, sir. I'm quite all right. There's no danger. Don't touch me. Well, 
Uh, what exactly is it you want to see me about? Well, I, um, you see, uh, well, Doctor, I, uh, I, I'm thinking of getting married and I'd, I, I want you to give me a, a thorough examination. Oh, very excellent idea. Yes, you, you understand, Doctor, an absolutely complete overhaul. I understand. Well, is, um, is, is everything all right, Doctor? So far, yes. The tests I've had made show no signs of any infection at present. I should say that you have definitely escaped gonorrhea, which is a short incubation period. Syphilis, however, may show itself only at any time up to two or even three months. Now, I shall have to see you again later before I can give you permission to marry. As, however, the girl you have told me about has been for some time under medical treatment, which considerably reduces the risk of infection, you will, I hope, have escaped syphilis also. But you must put off your making your final arrangements about your marriage till your next leave, when you will come and see me again. If anything suspicious appears before that time, you must see your battalion medical officer. Yes, I'm not surprised that you are annoyed with yourself. Certainly you have not been wise, and some people might even put it stronger. Now, my time is short, and another patient is due. But let me give you one word of advice before you go. You can see that your behavior can bring serious risks to your health. It can also wreck your own happiness, and that of others. You tell me it isn't easy to wait for marriage. Of course it isn't easy. The question is, is it worthwhile? It is true, as you say, many fellows do what you have been doing, and that some of them are married. But what about this nice girl you're hoping to marry? I'm sure you don't expect her to be having these adventures, and the married men expect their wives to behave themselves, do they? Men can't have it both ways, and while I know a lot about the difficulties of waiting, I also know a lot about the difficulties of not waiting. Not only the risks to health that you have seen, but also the anxieties and worries that promiscuous sex intercourse always brings. Our marriage system is often criticized, but we have learned that children need for their proper development, that love and sense of security which they can only get in a home where parents love each other and where both love their children. Conduct which risks health and develops irregular sex habits endangers the stability and the happiness of marriage. This kind of thing you've been going in for brings no real satisfaction. Real marriage, founded on the physical, emotional and mental harmony of two people, brings the greatest personal happiness and the only lasting satisfaction. That is the bell for my next patient. Well, Goodbye, and I hope to have good news for you next time. I'm just going out. This afternoon. Sorry, I'm due at my first aid class. No, I can't possibly. I'm spending the whole day with Aunt Susan. The day after? No, the parents of our evacuees are arriving for lunch. In the afternoon? No, 
No, I know the dentist and the hairdresser and all sorts of things. Listen, Kay, you've got to see me now. I'm coming right round. And don't you dare go out. Dear, 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 dear. Mm -hmm. What perfectly marvellous weather we're having. Lovely. No umbrella, Mrs. Hurst. Who cares, Mr. Hurst? Mm -hmm. 